Hello, everybody. This is John Mark Johnson, Jr. again, host of Reform GGA. And I'm here to show off some changes that I made to my CZP-09. As you can see, it's my old CZP-09 at the back that has the threaded barrel, it has the raised uh, night sights. But on the front end, it's definitely a different beast. I've attached a angled foregrip. This is the Diamondback Night Strike angled foregrip. I've attached an angled foregrip to the end. And as you can see, that angled foregrip sits pretty far forward on the gun. And I did that somewhat intentionally, but part of it is just the size of the angled foregrip. Part of it was so that I could still put a, a finger on the trigger guard and do my normal handgun hold. Uh, but part of it is just the size of the angled foregrip requires a certain amount of space. And it pushes the hand far enough forward that if I'd left the muzzle uh, in its normal has states with just a little thread protector on it, uh, my fingers would basically be out there in the danger zone, and of course I didn't want that. So I looked around at options online of, okay, how can I protect my fingers from getting blown off? Looking at various devices, muzzle devices that are out there, and most of the, the compensators and the flash hiders and all those things that are out there um, have, of course, holes on the sides of them that would, of course, still allow blast to get out and possibly injure my fingers. So I didn't like any of those. And the only two options that were basically left as a way of extending, uh, well, I should say there were three options that were left. One was to get an even longer barrel. And as far as I know, CZ nor any other aftermarket manufacturer makes a barrel for the CZ Peri 09 that is in any way uh, significantly longer than the barrel that I already have in it. I already have the threaded barrel, which is the longer barrel. Uh, there's not anyone that's going to really make any one thing that's significantly longer than that. So a longer barrel was kind of out. And then the other option that came to mind was a suppressor. And suppressors are expensive. There's a $200 tax stamp. Uh, there's a background check that the FBI has to run, all those kinds of things. It's a very long, complicated, rather annoying process. Um, so didn't go that way either. The only thing that was left was we'll try a linear compensator. And I do not remember the brand name of this compensator. I will put it in the description box. No, I'm not trying to sell these products. I don't get any kickback from them or anything like that but people are always going to ask, and it's either gonna wind up in the comment box or it's gonna wind up in the description box, so I might as well just go ahead and put it in the description box. I'll, I'll tell you what the linear uh, compensator is there. And so I found this linear compensator there, and the company that makes it makes a few different styles for nine millimeter. Uh, one is a little bit wider uh, than this one. I went ahead and went with the, the slim version just because I wanted to make sure uh, that it wouldn't hit anything in operating. And uh, so what I wound up with is a gun that looks a lot like uh, what the ATF would classify as an AOW and any other weapon, but legally speaking, is not. Uh, legally, if you have a pistol, what is legally considered a pistol, you can put an angled foregrip on it and it's just fine. And people do that with, say, their AR pistols and their uh, pistol AKs and those kinds of things all the time. Uh, that's not really controversial at all. It's fairly normal. And so that's what I did here. Now, if you put a true vertical grip on it, there's a $200 tax stamp there, and there's paperwork that you have to fill out with the ATF and send it all in and wait for months and months and months until you get it all back. And then you can go ahead and screw the little vertical grip on there. You know, literally months and hundreds of dollars to just tighten a screw. Um, yeah, American gun laws are ridiculous, but uh, going back to this thing, uh, the reason why I did this is uh, just because I wanted something that would be fun at the range and something uh, particular that uh, would kind of reduce some of the problems that people have with centerfire handguns. When people are just being introduced to centerfire handguns, shot anticipation is a huge, huge, huge problem. And even for people who have been shooting for years, if they don't train regularly, or if they're perhaps weak or have hand issues and those kinds of things, shot anticipation is a very big deal. Uh, there's people that I've known that have, you know, have been shooting guns for practically their entire adult life, you know, 20 years plus, and you take them out to the range, they don't shoot often, and 
they're getting to the stage in the life where they're getting arthritis in the hands and things like that. And child anticipation becomes a very real issue. And then, of course, there are people who are brand new to guns, and shot anticipation is going to be an issue there as well. Well, this is a way to kind of bridge between the gap between having something that actually has a proper stock on it that's taking the recoil and having something that mitigates the recoil a little bit uh, more than a standard handgun, but like I said, not as much as something that actually has a proper stock on it. It's kind of the middle of the road in terms of recoil management. So you're still learning some recoil management skills. There's still a certain amount of skill that's required, but it's mitigated because you can separate your hands and you can deal with the forces a little bit differently. Uh, I was out shooting it yesterday and I found that pulling forward with my offhand allowed me just basically to focus on running the trigger with my primary hand. And I really liked that. It didn't remove entirely the need for good recoil management, but it did allow me to focus a lot more on running the trigger properly and making sure that I had proper sight alignment, proper sight picture. And because of that, I was actually faster with this gun in this form than I am with a standard handgun. Of course, this was the standard handgun that I was using because I, I left a, a gap where the uh, the uh, angled foregrip begins just so that I could hold it like I normally do because I like to have my, my offhand index finger on the trigger guard. So I ran it like this, ran it holding that angled foregrip. And with the angled foregrip, I was actually faster in transitions. In terms of accuracy, I was shooting at about 15 yards, so it's going to be pretty negligible. But what I did notice is that moving my hands apart, letting one hand basically worry about recoil control and the other hand focus on the trigger instead of combining it with, with which is what you usually have to do with a handgun. Uh, your primary hand provides your primary grip and it runs the trigger. It just complicates everything that it has to do and leads to more shot anticipation. I found that I was able to transition between targets quite a bit faster. So I set up a couple targets, go left, right, left, right, and doing a normal handgun hold versus getting uh, some kind of a foregrip on there, the foregrip was definitely faster. Unfortunately, I didn't have a, um, any kind of a time measuring device out there with me, either somebody standing by with a, a stopwatch or you know one of the, the shot timers or anything like that, but I could still feel a very noticeable difference in how quickly I could get the shots off and actually still hit the intended target. I was had some eight inch shoot and sees out there and those were the targets that I was using. And yeah, with being able to change uh, the roles of the hands basically, one hand grips, the other hand runs the trigger. Uh, when you can kind of designate what each one does, shot anticipation, those kinds of things become less of an issue. Like I said, it's not as good as something that's properly stocked where you know, your shoulder is basically taking the recoil. It's not going to be as good as that, but it's kind of a middle ground. There's still recoil absorption that you need to think about, but it's not as much. I can focus much more on things like sight picture, sight alignment, trigger control, those kinds of things, and just have fun with it. Uh, frankly, for me, shooting an ordinary handgun in the ordinary manner is fatiguing after a while. And this is 9mm. And the magazines for it are rather high capacity. Um, well, this is standard for the gun, but compared to something like a revolver, it's high. Uh, this holds over 20 rounds. And 20 rounds with a 9mm can go kind of fast, but it can be kind of fatiguing, you know. Uh, when I was shooting this, I put at least 80 rounds through it. And that's not a ton, especially for a competitive shooter or something like that. For, for me, that is a bit of an issue, and there are some people that I go shooting with that would not get, not get anywhere near 80. They would do about 10, maybe 15 on a really good day, and then they would be done. You know, arthritis in the hands or uh, those kinds of things. Um, but with this thing, I was able to put 80 through the gun without any significant problems because the grip is simply different, and it is, in fact, more comfortable. Uh, it is not a conventional handgun. It's not really going to replace a conventional handgun. I mean, getting a holster for this thing alone would be enough of a problem. But as far as something that you can take to the range that's pleasant, 
and you know focus on other things trigger control side alignment those kinds of things and more so just have fun with it it really does work for that this is admittedly not an overly practical gun in terms of self-defense but it is fun and that alone i think makes it a worthwhile little project that and the fact that i'm sure that it's going to take off certain powers that be and be scary although it's actually easier to handle and those kinds of things but there are weird people out there but anyways that has been my little non aow aow project um, like i said it's not an overly practical gun just because it's really too big for and has a kind of an awkward shape for it to be practical in most holsters and those kinds of things but at the range as something that you can you know just more pleasantly enjoy the shooting experience and those kinds of things it's terrific um, now just as an aside some people say that their linear compensators give them a certain amount of noise reduction not enough to make it hearing safe generally uh, but a certain amount of hearing reduction and that may be the case with some linear compensators this one though for me did not do it significantly there was a little bit of reduction just because all the concussive force is going forward now uh, linear compensators are good at that but in terms of noise reduction this one in particular didn't do great this one is one of the slim ones uh, the company that makes this one also makes some larger ones and the larger ones may in fact actually have a little bit more of a, a noise dampening effect like I said, not enough to legally be counted as a suppressor, but might be appreciable to you. Uh, but this one did not function that way. Uh, the reason why it is on there is to protect my fingers from muzzle blast. And it also does indeed truly direct the concussive force forward. So it makes the gun a little bit more pleasant for me and people who would be standing on the fire line ne uh, firing line next to me. Uh, but yeah, that is the non aow aow czp09 thank you very much for your time and attention bye bye